The glow of the TV screen has long been a source of entertainment, but beneath the surface of our favorite shows, some unknown plot twists and secret clues may be hidden. Number 10. Good Morning Miss Bliss is a television series that aired from the 7th of December in 1988 until the 18th of March the following year. It aired on NBC and Disney Channel. The show was a precursor to another series called Saved by the Bell. The show centers around Carrie Bliss and her 8th graders, including Zach Morris, Lisa Turtle, Samuel Powers, Mikey Gonzalez, and Nicole Coleman. In the show, Zach played an 8th grade student at the John F. Kennedy Jr. High School in Indianapolis, Indiana. He was a troublemaker, but definitely not the popular kid. He would regularly cause problems that Mr. Belding, the school principal, would have to deal with. His schemes often involved Mikey and Zach butting heads with Nicole. In the August of 1989, Saved by the Bell was introduced to NBC, replacing Good Morning Mrs. Bliss. The American sitcom followed the life of the same teen, Zach Morris. The show was so successful that it spawned three more spin-off series and two spin-off movies. This time, the characters were attending the Bayside High in sunny California. It was here that the main character would go from being the geeky teen to everyone's favorite thing. In this show, he was musically talented and became the lead singer and guitarist for his band called Zack Attack. He also ran against another student for class president and won. His life at Bayside High was like a dream. At least, this is what conspiracy theorists have been thinking. According to some theorists who have apparently decoded the Saved by the Bell theme song, the entire show only exists within the mind of the pimple-faced, unpopular version of Zack. The two shows share some similarities, including the use of the characters, but their differences are quite obvious. It's these differences that have led theorists to the possible and startling truth about the show. It was all a dream. Believers of this conspiracy state that the whole show is just an escapist fantasy of this disillusioned character. Failures and oddities are all signs that the subconscious is attempting to break through. All of his problems seem to just fade away in his dream world at Bayside High. At the start of each episode, the viewer is met with a theme song that seems to tell the story of the life of the student who is stumbling through a world made of consequence. The song begins in a panic, where Zack hurriedly grabs his books and gives himself a look. The line, I'm at the corner just in time to see the bus fly by, plays out. Then he mentions a pop quiz and that his dog ate his homework. Zack also tries to make himself look small by riding low in his chair. But this part of the theme song makes no sense because the student never had a bad day at the high school. He'd never been a mess, and everything appeared to ricochet off of him. He also didn't make himself small during a pop quiz and rather cheated on it. At the end of the song, though, before the show at Bayside High begins, he's saved by the bell, which allows him to go home and into the world where tomorrow will be alright because he's been saved by the bell. According to theorists, the name of the show and the chorus of the song indicate that he's been released into his fantasy, which is much better than a real school. Zack travels to the infinite dream scene of Bayside High, where he's popular, loved, and accomplished. Number 9. On the 20th of September in 2002, a cult classic science fiction TV series called Firefly premiered in the United States and Canada. It was conceived by Joss Whedon, who also created Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The show takes on a futuristic setting and is modeled after traditional Western movie motifs. The series was set 500 years in the future and followed the renegade crew who were aboard a spacecraft. They were trying to survive by traveling through the unknown areas of the galaxy. During their journey, they had to avoid the warring factions and the authorities who were out to get them. The characters start with Malcolm Reynolds, a human man and the captain of Serenity. Zoe Washburn was another character born in 2484 and was said to be a brown coat and the loyal second in command. Hoban Washburn, Zoe's husband, was the ship's pilot. Inara Sarah is a companion who had leased a shuttle from the captain and travel along with his crew. There are several other notable characters. The show had gathered an immense following of loyal fans and viewers. So why did the show get cancelled? The series had randomly been cancelled before the first season was even over, and several episodes were not aired. Many theories have come about that possibly explain why this happened. 
The first was that it was intended to be aired on Friday evenings, but was targeted at a younger audience. This audience would probably not be home on a Friday evening, and so when the series aired, there was no one there to watch it. The second theory is bad marketing. Firefly was a pretty serious show that saw social commentary on occasion, but anyone who was watching it for the straight-out comedy was bound for disappointment. Yet, it had been promoted by Fox Marketing as a zany comedy, which it wasn't, rather than as the gritty space western show that it was. Another theory is that the episodes had been aired out of order. Anyone watching the series while it aired may not have been able to follow along, since all the episodes were being mixed up. Others have suggested that the show was simply made to be cancelled. But one theory is far more outlandish. It's believed that the government had something or everything to do with the show being cancelled. While Fox maintains that the show's cancellation came due to low ratings, some theorists believe that the United States government didn't appreciate the anti-government stance that the series had taken on. The show saw the outlaws battling against the oppressive union of allied planets. While Firefly was airing, the Bush administration was trying to gain support for an Iraqi war. The theory states that it would deter the citizens from seeing things the way the government did in pursuing a war on Iraq. Fierce maintained that they pushed for the show to be taken off the air, and three months later, the war began. Number 8. Gilligan's Island was an American sitcom, a comedy series that aired three seasons on CBS. It began in 1964 and ended three years later. The entirety of the show consisted of 98 episodes, with the first season having a total of 36 episodes, and the next two having a combination of 62. The show was filmed in black and white, and was accompanied by a laugh track. The show followed seven castaways and their adventure on the island where they must attempt to survive. The episodes center around the dissimilar individuals, their inner conflicts, and various attempts to return home. It's recognized as an American cultural icon, and regarded as a cult classic by a select few. The first and main character is the first mate, Gilligan, who is an accident-prone and naive crewman. Then the captain, or Jonas Grumby, comes in as the one who will always smack Gilligan on the head with his hat, and is followed by Thurston Howell the millionaire who took a trunk full of money along with him on a cruise. Natalie Schaefer played Eurus Lovey Wentworth Howell, the millionaire's wife. The movie star, Ginger Grant, was also cast on the island, which is believed to be the show's main focus despite its title. Professor Roy Hinckley, the smart one of the group, ironically fails to get the castaways off the island. And a simple farm girl, Mary Ann Summers, also found herself stranded. Some conspiracy theorists and fans of the show have an interesting theory. They believe that the island is not an island at all, but is actually the bad, burny place of hell. The castaways had been aboard the SS Minnow, and believers of the theory think that when it crashed, all the inhabitants actually perished and found themselves in hell that was described as a less burny island in the middle of nowhere. To support their theory, it's pointed out that there are seven characters, each representing one of the seven sins. The captain is believed to represent two of the sins, gluttony and wrath, since he always takes something out on the first mate. Of course, the millionaire Howell takes the form of greed, while his wife, who is averse to work, is the portrayal of the sin sloth. Ginger is seen as the stand-in for lust, while the innocent farm girl, who is jealous of the movie star's looks and lifestyle, represents envy. Despite his efforts, the professor cannot fix the ship and can't get the castaways off the island but he's too prideful to admit this. And Gilligan, well, he wears red and spoils all possible attempts to leave the island or be rescued. Fans suggest that he's Satan himself. One Reddit user in the horror subreddit brought this exact theory to the forum. He explained that it holds a dark secret. He points out how Ginger wears revealing outfits and is obsessed with how she looks, how jealous Marianne is of her, and how much of a know-it-all the professor is. He continues on and says the seven sinners have been trapped and forced to live with each other on the island that was named after the character that may or may not represent Satan. Number 7. The series From is an American science fiction horror TV show that premiered in 2022. It unravels the mystery behind a strange nightmarish town that traps anyone who enters it. Those who enter try to find their way out but always end up back in the town. The residents there try to maintain a sense of normalcy, while the new inhabitants continue to search for a way out. 
but the weirdness doesn't end there. The self-appointed mayor, Boyd Stevens, starts to ring his bell in the late afternoon signaling for all the residents to go inside and lock their doors. This is because threats lurk within the surrounding forests. When the sun goes down, terrifying creatures come out, threatening the survival of those who live there. The show gives little indication as to what these terrifying creatures must be, or what's going on in the place situated in the middle of nowhere. And so it's up to the viewers to figure it out. This is where the conspiracy theories emerge as fans attempt to unravel the puzzle. Some theorists believe that the creatures of the night are evil fae that alter the town or trap their victims inside. Evidence for this theory is found in the stone circle that one of the characters had been sitting at. Stone circles or fairy circles are present within various folklore, such as Dutch, German, and Scandinavian, and even Russian tales. Fae can be found in multiple European cultures, including the Celtic, Germanic, and French. The second biggest piece of evidence that this may be the works of the Fae is that the creatures lure in and torment the victims. But a talisman of sorts, possibly Nordic or Icelandic, can keep them away. Another indication that this is the likely scenario, according to the theorists, is that a group of Fae appear as crows and take people to bad places. In the first episode of the series, the crows make an eerie appearance. Another theory paints the monsters as vampires or a similar demon. This is supported by the fact that they can only come out at night, or when there's no sun, and why a talisman can ward them off. The town was originally built in the 50s, and some of the inhabitants may look like they'd come from around the same time. It's theorized that Victor had somehow released the demons, and they possessed the townsfolk, who are now the wandering and hungry creatures that roam at night. It's also thought that the place might be an extra-dimensional prison that keeps demonic entities inside. One of the characters, Sarah, speaks of the voices in her head that want to come out. Perhaps they're there for a reason. There's also the appearance of a boy in white. He may be a demon that is repented or even a fallen angel. Another theory suggests that the whole thing is an experiment, similar to the plot of The Maze Runner. The people have been baited into going to the town and becoming trapped there and terrorized by the elements. The creatures keep them all in one place and prevent them from wandering out in search of answers. Conspiracy theorists think that the threat of the monsters gives the subjects very limited time to wander too far out into the forest, where they may find a dome wall. A branch from this theory suggests that the boy in white is the child of Jim and Tabitha, who lost their son the previous year. The theory suggests that the entire show is happening within the man of Jim, who's undergoing experimental psychotherapy. It's also been suggested that the characters are all in comas, or that the town may be purgatory. Some think that if they wander beyond the borders, the characters may find another town exactly like theirs. It's also been simply proposed that the people are not stuck there, and could probably leave using the water since there have been various allusions to water in one of the characters' dreams, Ethan's Chromnockle story, and even Boyd's boat fish. The nearby lake may hold more than just water. Number 6. Friends, the much-loved popular American sitcom, aired on NBC back in 1994, all the way to 2004. The show won six Emmy Awards and centered around six young adults who were either neighbors or roommates in the Greenwich Village of New York. It revolves around each character's adventure in finding their sense of belonging and commitment while maintaining a humorous feel. The show had broken hearts and called for celebration. The characters included Monica Geller and her brother Ross, a paleontologist. Rachel Green grew up in a wealthy family and worked as a barista at the local Central Perk Cafe for a while. Joey Tribbiani plays the buffoon along with his partner in crime Chandler Bing. Then we have Phoebe Buffet, the main focus of this TV show conspiracy theory. As the show progressed, each character would become a household name. Each of the characters have distinct personalities, but Phoebe comes in as the wild card of the lot. Viewers of this sitcom don't know much about her past. All that's known is that her father walked out, her mother passed away, and she had an identical twin sister named Ursula. But beyond these few facts, very little is known about her character. Which brings us to the first conspiracy theory about her. The character was a secret American spy. One supporting fact of this theory is that she could speak multiple languages and had no trouble pronouncing some difficult names. She also managed to charm a foreign diplomat and spoke about international affairs. 
but Phoebe did make mention of her past crimes and the weird things that happened to her on the streets. But when her police officer date had a look into her file, he found some strange things. And when he mentioned it in front of her friends, she pushed him out the door. Adding to this is that Phoebe had also lived for quite a few months in Czechoslovakia during the Cold War. This isn't the only outlandish theory about the show or about the character. Her family issues and trauma make her the perfect target for darker theories such as this one. Some fans believe that the show was nothing more than the product of the beloved Phoebe's imagination. Back in 2015, the theory found its way onto Twitter. It indicated that after she left on her own, Phoebe had to resort to living on the streets, mugging people to survive and being arrested at least once. She then met Monica and they became roommates. But what if that didn't actually happen? The author of this conspiracy explained that what if, for all 10 seasons of the show, she'd been looking through the window of Central Perk, watching the lives of the other five characters, and projecting herself into their lives. All she ever wanted was some friends. The conspiracy was angrily shut down by co-creator Marta Kaufman, but the theories have some valid aspects. Details of the character's life are rather inconsistent, but the theme of her history remains tragic for such an eccentric and light-hearted character. Number 5. Yet another cult classic was Full House, the well-known American sitcom that aired in the 80s and 90s. It consists of some wholesome humor and heartfelt moments. The endearing characters have captured the hearts of many viewers. The show was created by Jeff Franklin, Thomas L. Miller, and Robert L. Boyett. The scene is set in San Francisco and follows the life of Danny Tanner, a sports anchor. Bob Saget played his character and he takes on the role of a widowed father of three daughters, including DJ, Stephanie, and young Michelle, who's known for her catchphrase, you got it dude. The series begins with the idea that Danny had lost his wife, Pam, and now has to navigate parenthood alone and raise three girls. But he ends up enlisting the help of some of his close friends. Joey Gladstone acts as the comedian of the lot and is Danny's best friend. He also brings in his brother-in-law, Jesse, the rock musician. There's a clear, unusual family structure that goes on here, and they're constantly met with some ups and downs, but also some heartwarming moments. Throughout the years, though, fans have brought about some seriously odd and far-fetched theories about the show. One of the more popular conspiracy theories present here puts the biological parentage of the three daughters on trial. These believers have noticed that the apparent father, Danny, has brown hair and each of the girls have striking blonde hair. Blonde hair is a recessive trait, and Pam, who is of Greek descent, also had blonde hair, which would put the likelihood of all three girls having blonde hair at 12.5%. But these changes increase significantly if both parents have blonde hair, like Pam and perhaps Joey. The only other blonde-haired male in the show. Viewers support this theory about not only his hair, but other features that resemble the girls. He also showed a clear dedication to helping raise them and even moved into their house. Joey may be the biological father of the three daughters and not Danny. In later episodes, it was revealed that he'd been the one to bring Pam and Danny together, which established that they had a history. One of the darker branch offs from this states that Joey actually had a secret affair with Pam who he spent time with while Danny was off at work. With the proposed biological father moving in, he would be able to maintain a close relationship with his suspected children, while also keeping his identity a secret. Another outlandish theory connected to the series is that Pam didn't actually meet her demise but survived, unlike the rest of the crew. The followers of this conspiracy speculate that Jesse, Danny, Joey, DJ, and Stephanie were all stuck in purgatory at the San Francisco home. As for Michelle, well, she's not actually a family member, but rather a demon that had been around for quite some time and was seeking the companionship, comfort, and stability that the Tanner family distinctly represented. This is supported by the idea that she always finds ways to keep the family at the house. One example is that she always tells Uncle Jesse that she feels sick so he can't leave. This is further supported when Jesse ends up moving into the house with his new wife, Becky, who has two children. Similarly, one theory proposes that the same young daughter doesn't actually exist and is simply a manifestation of Danny's grief as a way of dealing with the loss of his wife. Some YouTubers have taken to redoing episodes of the show and taking Michelle out, which makes her father seem crazy and as though the other household members are going along with his delusions. 
This idea is supported by the fact that she doesn't return in the spin-off that's titled Fuller House. There also may be notable inconsistencies in the series, one of which is Jesse's last name change. In the first series, his band was referred to as Jesse Cochran and the Rippers, while later it was called Jesse and the Rippers. There were claims that he'd also finished high school, with conflicting episodes indicating that he was a dropout. There's also an impossibility that Cousin Steve is actually DJ's cousin. According to theorists, all of these errors point to an interference in time travel, or maybe even inconsistencies in Danny's brain. Number 4. The plot of the hit American television show Home Improvement revolves around life in the Taylor household, which plays on the dynamics between Tim, his wife Jill, and their three sons, Brad, Randy, and Mark. The show stars Tim Allen as the tool man. It initially aired on ABC in September of 1991 and concluded in 1999. It switched between the misadventures on Tim's handyman TV show called Tool Time. The series reveals the challenges of parenthood and personal growth. In the series, we're also met with strange exchanges between Tim and his enigmatic neighbor, Wilson. Famous celebrities and athletes made several guest appearances throughout the eight-season run. Home Improvement had its fair share of fan conspiracy theories, which starts with the neighbor, Wilson. He's inspired by Tim Allen's childhood memory, which he would often see his neighbor but not his whole face because of the height of the fence. One of the theories postulates that Wilson is part of the Witness Protection Program. Adding more credence to this is that his full name is Wilson W. Wilson, which definitely seems like a fake name. It was also during the show that we hear of his wife's passing, who seemed to have met her demise under mysterious circumstances. It was also discovered that he'd come from Chicago, which is the home to an abundance of gang activity during the 80s and 90s. Wilson is quite clearly being very careful not to reveal his face to Tim, a local celebrity. He uses scarves and masks when leaving the house to further conceal his true identity. Another compelling fan theory suggests that Wilson is the biological father of one of Tim's children. This theory, if true, would have significant emotional implications for the Taylor family. It could explain why Wilson is so careful to hide his face, not wanting the rest of the family to see the resemblance. This theory, like many others, adds a layer of emotional depth to the show, making us feel more connected to the characters and their stories. Number 3. Bluey is said to be the hit children's TV show of this era. It's an Australian preschool animated show created by Joe Brum. It premiered on ABC Kids in October of 2018 and can be found on various channels including Disney Channel and Junior, as well as Disney+. Plus. The show follows the life of Bluey, anthropomorphic six-year-old Blue Healer. She has an abundance of energy and displays curiosity for the world. She lives with her father, Bandit, and her mother, Chili. She also has a younger sister named Bingo, who often joins on the adventures. Bluey and Bingo regularly embark on some imaginative games together. Other dog breeds are featured in the show, such as Golden Retrievers, Pomeranians, Poodles, and Dachshunds, each of which is represented by other characters. The theme focuses on growing up, family, and the Australian culture as a whole. The whole scene may appear very innocent, but that's not according to some conspiracy theorists. It's been suggested that Bandit and Chili have taken up a criminalistic lifestyle. This is supported by the fact that the Healer family resides in the Brisbane area of Paddington, a rather expensive suburb. Homes in such a neighborhood retail for around a million dollars, which the parents may not be making with the jobs they currently have. Chili works in airport security, while Bandit is an archaeologist. Both salaries combined would probably still not be enough for such a house. So how do they afford a house in an expensive neighborhood? Well, according to theorists, this is due to their criminal lifestyle, where Bandit has the ability to obtain some incredibly rare and valuable items through his job. And Chile can ensure that such finds make it past the strict Australian border security. The incredible theories about the cartoon don't end there either. In the episode Onesies in Season 3, Chili's sister Brandy visits the family. She initially had a difficult time acknowledging Bingo, and then Chili points out that the two look alike. After this, there's an air of awkwardness that begins to settle in. Theorists believe that Brandy is actually Bingo's mother, but she wasn't able to care for her, which is why she becomes part of the Healer family. 
another proposal connects the show to the Kardashians. The family is believed to be on a reality TV show like Keeping Up with the Kardashians. This is attributed to the fact that they often look directly at the camera, and the healers appear on the covers of the books in the show, which suggests that they're famous. One of the stranger conspiracies is that the little pup, Bingo, has celiac disease. In the season 1 episode titled Bumpy and the Wise Old Wolfhound, Bingo has been hospitalized with no explanation. Some of the clues point to a gluten intolerance. During other episodes, like Dad Drop Off, Bandit prepares the girls' lunches and says gluten-free and gluten-not-free. This indicated that one of these has a gluten intolerance. Whether or not the pup has celiac disease is unknown, but she certainly stays clear of gluten. Number 2. The Teletubbies Who would have thought that the most innocent of children's shows would find itself on the list of strange conspiracy theories? The Teletubbies was a British children's show that followed the lives of four colorful characters. It was intended for an audience of toddlers and young children. They're soft and round humanoid beings with smiling faces and unique antennas on their heads. They're also equipped with a TV screen on their tummies to watch random clips. They're also watched over by a sun baby who giggles and smiles throughout the series. The purple fellow is Tinky Winky, who's the biggest Teletubby who always goes first. Then we have Dipsy, the green guy who loves to dance. Lala is the yellow lady who loves to sing and perform. Lastly is the red Poe. Her signature moves are a star jump and a karate hand pose. While it may have seemed nonsensical and innocent to us as children, as some grew older, they took another look at the show and discovered some startling finds. The first outrageous theory is that the creatures are actually biogenetically engineered beings that serve as slaves. They point to the fact that there's no official backstory for the creatures, and they don't seem to be in control of their own destiny. A mysterious background voice is always instructing them on what to do, when and where, and everything from eating to sleeping. In addition to this voice, there's a vacuum-like character who's been named the Nunu, who seems to be keeping the characters in check and ensuring that they adhere to the orders that they're given. It gets even weirder when the pinwheel is at the top of a hill which acts like a point of worship. When it spins, the Teletubbies drop everything and fall to their knees. The favorite character is then chosen, and its TV screen tummy switches on. Then there's the theory that the Tubbies are actually trying to hypnotize and brainwash the viewers. Microphones pop out from the ground and continuously chant time for Teletubbies, which ultimately led some parents to boycott the show. These fascinating and colorful humanoids are also connected to Harry Potter. They were both released in 1997, coincidentally, and their antennae serve as a supporting piece of evidence. Tinky Winky, Dipsy, and Poe have all the symbols that represent the tale of the three brothers in the last two books or movies. Tinky Winky bears the invisibility cloak, Poe has the ring, and Dipsy has the wand. As for Lala, her antenna resemble the same lightning bolt scar on Harry Potter's forehead. Creepily, another theory suggests that these creatures are actually 10 feet tall in real life, which has actually been proven horrifyingly true. But why are these three alien-like creatures on Earth in the first place? According to one Reddit user, their real planet had been destroyed, and they were the last survivors of their kind. Or perhaps they're a more advanced invasion force that travels the universe in search of planets to conquer. Number 1. Kim Possible was one of the best and longest-running animated series on Disney Channel. It was an Emmy award-winning American show about a teenage crime fighter who had to juggle family, school, and saving the world all at once. It revolves around the main character, Kim Possible, who saves the world along with her best friend, Ron Stoppable, who is accompanied by his pet naked mole rat, Rufus. Another character is the computer genius, Wade, who also helps Kim on her missions. There are a variety of villains, but the two main ones are Dr. Draken, a mad scientist who plots world domination and his sidekick, Shigo, who can generate powerful blasts of energy right from our hands. The series is set in Middleton in the United States of America and premiered on Disney Channel in June of 2002. It ran for just over five years with 87 episodes that spanned over four seasons. It was a great show that gained many fans, but some of those fans began to dig around and uncover some strange theories about the show. One of the conspiracies is that the entire plot is happening within Kim's mind. 
The suggestion is supported by the fact that her parents, who are a scientist and a doctor, don't have much time for her. She's constantly carted off to the next babysitter or to go along with family members to activities like golf practice. The teen is also antisocial, with only a few friends, and takes on the appearance of an awkward girl. During her life, her golf instructor, an ill-tempered Irishman, often hits the golf balls right at her, and her sensei sometimes screams at her if she messes up. For these reasons, Kim makes up another life as an escape from her actual one. In this imaginary world, she plays the role of a crime-fighting young adult. It's also believed that the top villains in the story are actually the real-life people who are keeping her parents away from her. Dr. Draken might be the name that she gave to her father's boss. Draken sounds close to a dragon, named for the volume that the boss would use to scream at her father if he made a small mistake. Professor Dementor refers to the professor who downplays her mother's science research papers, which forces her to have late nights at home and causes her even more stress. The villain, Shago, may even represent one of Kim's babysitters. But an alternate theory states that Kim Possible is merely a side character in Ron's life. Fans suggest that Ron's poor social skills, dislike for change, obsessiveness, and trivial knowledge may be an indication of Asperger's syndrome. All the villains aren't actually villains, but are normal people whom the teenage boy views as evil. The two became friends at a young age, and to him, Kim seems like a superhero who helps and protects him. As for the naked mole rat, well, that would be a service animal. The outrageous theories don't stop there either. According to another fan who takes to Reddit with the username Nacho Nako, Kim and her two younger brothers, Tim and Jim, have all been genetically altered by their scientist mother and doctor father. He suggests that even though the teen is a sophomore, she has an athletic physique that is never explained. She's never seen working out or engaging in any exercise except for one episode, when she's given Shigo's powers. The twins also have a strange advancement. Even though they're young, they're able to invent random gadgets all on their own. Every time they appeared on screen, they had a new gizmo that they'd been working on together, and were often able to figure out what the villain was planning before Kim did. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.